It amazes me how little we appreciate some of the people in our lives until it's just too late, for regardless of whatever reason. So today I am doing a tribute to my ex-late stepfather. Now to give you a little backstory and a little explanation of what was going on with various things, I'm going to start off by explaining two things. The Oedipus Complex and the Latency Stage. The Oedipus Complex, according to Sigmund Freud, was you wanted to have sex with your mother and you wanted to kill your father, but because this led to guilty feel feelings, you wanted to castrate yourself. Now, this is true on a non-literal sense in most cases. I don't think most people want to have sex with their mothers, but they do. a lot of people do tend to pick wives that resemble or remind them or have certain characteristics or attributes as their mothers do. Because we appreciate our mothers for being our mothers and various parts of them, psychologically speaking, which remind us of those. Um, and the latency stage is when your physical in, during your physical development, for some reason, there's a complete absence of uh, sexual feelings, sexual exploration, uh, sexual attention, basically. You are so busy doing other things that these kind of go out of your mind at this stage in your life. My Oedipus Complex happened during my latency stage. This was when I was five years old. And my mother worked very, very hard to support three kids after her husband divorced her. Even the um, checks that she got for all three kids for the month was actually $25 for the month. Seriously. During the late 80s and early 90s, how is a woman supposed to support her kids on $25 a month? So her supporting all three of us was very, very difficult for her. She would come home completely exhausted. And she would ask my sisters to rub her feet. And they would go take one look at her feet and go, ew, and run off. I mean, there were parts of her feet that were extremely hard, and there was like this white cake stuff, and it was just, it was nasty. These feet smelled, they were wretched, and just about every way imaginable for feet to be, and then some. Um, they were just horrible, horrible feet, because she worked on them so much. She took so much time ca taking care of other people that while she was at work, she let herself get destroyed, basically, to support her kids. So, she's killing herself for everybody but herself. And my sisters would run off. Well, I thought it was my responsibility to take care of my mother because she was taking care of me. You know, a two-way street here. So I would massage her feet. And I took very, I took a lot of pride in being the man of the house because I was the only boy. So I was the man of the house. It was a completely meaningless title. I had no authority in the house whatsoever. In certain circumstances, I had less authority than everybody in the fucking house. But regardless, I was man of the house. And one day, she brings home a guy. Almost twice her age. Was actually a few years um, younger than my grandmother. And they brought me fast food. Now, this is, this is phenomenal food to me at the time. Um, because I almost never got to taste food like this before. I mean, my mom could cook. There's no question about that. But it wasn't like this. Ooh, fast forward. It was like like as ritzy as I could imagine at the time. Um, now I don't eat fast food. I just eat the food I cook because I'm actually a really decent cook myself. But um, I'm eating this, this burger from either McDonald's or Burger King. I, I don't remember which. I think it was McDonald's. I think it was just your basic cheeseburger. But to me, it was like the Ritz. And my mother asked me what she thought of this guy. And I said, I didn't like him. The reason I didn't like him, because I was man of the house. You know, regardless how meaningless it was, to a little five-year-old, the title alone is special. 
and I knew I knew what this was. This was <laughs> basically a bribe for my affection. Um, it wasn't a bad idea. It wasn't a bad thing, but that's what it was. To a five-year-old, you pretty much have to bribe them like that. Um, it's not really a bribe, but you understand the the symbolism of it. And I understood at the time the symbolism of it and what it meant and what he obviously meant to her. For her to ask me, of all people. Even though I was man of the house, I knew this was a very strange thing. And I, you can kind of, you can't fully understand at the time, but you have this feeling of the essence of everything that's going. And it, I knew where all this was headed. <sighs> You know, in the back of my mind kind of thing. You know, I couldn't put it into words, but I I just saw everything coming down the line. And I was right. Eventually, they got married. Obviously, otherwise it would be a tribute to him. Um, and I didn't realize at the time what he meant to her or what she meant to him. But I was a crafty bastard, and I was always trying to get my biological mother back together with her first husband. I had really smart ideas on how to do this. Or so I thought at the time. I figured all they had to do was start talking to each other, and then they would make up. By the time I was doing this, I was six years old. Because we were living with Ralph in Ralph's home, and, and he uh, had married my mother by then. And I figured I could still get the other two together. Well, I would I would be talking to him on the phone and I would say, hold on, my mother wants to talk to you. And I'd go to my mother and say, hey, he wants to talk to you. And then I'd run off, hoping they would mend while I was gone. Yeah, that didn't work. Um, <laughs> and if I knew then what I know now, there's no way I would have even tried. Um, because her second husband was so much better for her than her first. By leaps and bounds, by galaxies, by multiple universes. Um, as a matter of fact, I would be completely ob obliterated by the idea that there could be a multiple universe where her first husband was actually better for her. That would just blow my mind. But... I remember the moment, the moment I respected him. And I was being dropped off by her first husband. And she wanted to get me into the house as soon as possible. I didn't understand at the time why, but I most certainly understand now. And uh, he got mad and I was literally being pulled by, on, by each arm and by each parent and uh, he got mad picked her up and slammed her on the back of a car knocking her unconscious now the moment that happened my stepfather got up from got from got up from wherever he was and just started walking I mean the look on his face was you gonna die and he was in rage, and he was walking fast. I mean, it was like, phew. He was just, there was, uh, there's no movie to this day that can demonstrate the sheer anger, the sheer justice in his eyes. And her first husband, the first thing he, he, he does is tries to get into the car as it's driving down the road because they were that scared of a man twice his age and half his size. The coward who beat up a woman for no real reason at all was scared of a man half his size, twice his age. Now that to this day, I mean, I, I, I rooted for him as I seen him walk past me. It was phenomenal. And that's when I realized how much love he had for my mother. And for that alone, he has my undying gratitude. But on top of that, he took in three kids who were rambunctious and destructive as hell and ate everything in the fridge. 
and this is when we were little kids. I mean, real little. Like I said, I was. I met him when I was five. I left when I um, I was nine and a half. And uh, he worked third shift, third shift a lot of the times, and we were noisy running around during the day, which woke him up a lot. It infuriated him, and he had a right to be. Um, I didn't understand at the time that he had a right to be. I do now because I've worked several third shift jobs and second shift jobs. Um, and I understand, you know, how annoying someone being noisy can be when you're trying to sleep and you've got an incredibly hard day at work to go to. And not just one day at work, but five days or more in a row. And he worked, you know, constantly. I Half the time, I've never even seen him. Um... But, you know, for him to take us in, for him to take care of my mom financially and us financially, you know, that was, that on top of that, is phenomenal. And everything he did and everything for my mom was extraordinary. I didn't even know half the stuff at the time that he did for my mom. And he still did for my mom after they divorced. And them divorcing was, was really, really stupid and, and probably mostly my mother's fault. And... I don't think she's ever stopped kicking herself, but we make the decisions we make for a lot of the times the dumb reasons we do, and that's that. So this is my tribute to him, you know. Hope you're in a better place. You you deserve so many good things for you in the afterlife, because I don't think you got half of what you deserved in this life. So this is my tribute to a great man who I will respect to the day I die. <laughs>